Alrighty then. Up until now, we have focused on the labor market, looking at the consumer who supplies labor and the firm who demands labor. And we are now going to pull that together into what is called a general equilibrium analysis. So behind the scenes of what we were doing before in the labor market was a goods market. I mean, after all, firms are hiring workers so that they can produce goods, which they then sell to the consumers. Now in micro, you usually look at one market at a time and that's called partial equilibrium. But in macro, you need to look at all markets at the same time. And this is called general equilibrium. So in the context of what we're now doing, we need to make sure that we can clear both the labor market and the goods market simultaneously. That means supply equals demand for labor, supply equals demand for goods. What we're gonna do is we're gonna solve for endogenous variables in terms of exogenous variables. An endogenous variable is just a price or a quantity that gets determined inside the model. So in the context of the current model, this would include the wage, consumption, hours worked. Exogenous variables are variables that are kind of the driving forces in a model. They're the things that are determined outside of the model, um, but affect the endogenous variables. So again, in this model, that would be total factor productivity, maybe some policy variables. So a solved model then shows how endogenous variables change when exogenous variables change. And once you have a solution, you can ask hypothetical questions like, what happens to the economy when an exogenous variable changes? For example, you have higher factor productivity. Now, when you go to a general equilibrium, we have to add another player, and that is the government. So we now are gonna have consumers, firms, and the government. Of course, actual governments do a lot of different things. Our government is very simple. It's going to choose an exogenous level of government spending on consumption goods. We'll call that G. And this is going to get financed through lump sum taxes, our capital T. Now, like consumers, the government is going to face a budget constraint. And what we are imposing in this budget constraint is that total spending has to always equal total revenue. Now, there's only one kind of spending in this economy, and that's this consumption goods. And we're assuming that these consumption goods do not contribute to productivity and do not directly interact with consumers' consumption decisions. We also have only one kind of tax, this non-distorting lump sum tax. But we've, of course, seen what the differences are when you put a distorting tax in. This government can't borrow, so all of its spending has to be financed um, with taxes contemporaneously. And because government spending is exogenous, taxes are completely endogenous and determined by government spending. We're gonna derive a competitive equilibrium, which is a set of endogenous quantities, consumption, labor supply, labor demand, taxes, and output, such that Given the exogenous things in the model, which would include government purchases, total factor productivity, and the existing level of the capital stock, a few conditions are satisfied. First, consumers are maximizing utility. Second, firms are maximizing profits. Both consumers and firms behave competitively, so they take prices as given. Labor market's clear. That means that labor supply equals labor demand, and then we're just gonna call the, the, the equilibrium value of labor N. Goods market's clear, so Y equals C plus G, and the government budget constraint has to be satisfied. Just as a quick note, this model has a market clearing condition for goods that just says Y equals C plus G. And this is a special case of what we've already seen when we looked at data. Actual GDP equals consumption plus investment plus government spending plus the difference between exports and imports, net exports. Because the capital stock is constant, investment is zero in this model, and we're either assuming that trade is always balanced or 
that the uh, economy is closed to the rest of the world, so net exports are always zero. I want to emphasize that this is an equilibrium condition, and it has a direct interpretation in the goods market. So Y is just going to be the total supply of goods by firms, and then there are going to be two sources of demand for those goods. Uh, consumption, which is demand for goods by households and consumers, and government purchases, which is demand for goods by the government. So goods market clearing can be interpreted as the aggregate supply of goods equals the aggregate demand for goods.